Hi, I am going to assemble one of my LED Jewel Thief candles on camera for you today. Let's get started. First what I'm going to do is place the small tra transistor and resistor on the board. So I need to place the solder paste. Let's zoom in. I will try to keep everything on camera, but no guarantees. Alright, I have this little syringe. All I'm going to do is place it on these pads right here where the transistor and resistor go. Let's get that squeezed out. Starting at flowing is the, is the difficult part. doesn't take much and there we go it's on the board now place the components that's the transistor little NPN and here's the 0603 resistor 1k um, the schematics for this are on my blog post if you are interested in what these components are actually. I'm just going to place that here. And I'm going to place this here. I think I think there's enough solder paste on that one pad. This pad right here might not have enough. So um yeah, I'll, I'll just put a little more. I don't want it to have too little. You can see I'm not too concerned with the alignment because as, as the solder starts flowing, it will help align the components. All right, now I'm gonna turn on the hot gun so it might get a little loud and let it heat up. I'm also gonna turn on my solder and iron and get that heating up off to the side here and that's just for touch-up work if I need to so the heat gun is set to 360 C and it's about it's done now it's heated right up I usually heat on the ceramic tile just to protect my workspace a little bit and I got this cutting mat here you can see um, all right now we heat it until the solder starts to flow. Shouldn't take too long. Let me see if I can zoom in and maybe you can see what's actually going on. Maybe you'll be able to see the solder start flowing. First it gets like a dull, dull gray. And kind of like fluffy looking, I would say, and then it gets nice and shiny and it pulls the components right into place usually. So there goes the resistor mostly and the transistor just has those back two pins still. So let's focus on the transistor a little bit. Um, okay, I might I'm going to have to focus my heat back here a little. The transistor seems to sometimes not snap into place correctly. So I found that using the tweezers, because everything is hot, heat it up again, and just kind of like tap it around. There we go. Now, snap into place. Alright, I'm going to turn the heat gun off, just so you can hear me. Let's see if we can get into the center of frame a little bit better. That's the first two surface components done, the smallest. Not very difficult as you can see. Next we're going to place the little tiny SMD transformer. This is a common mode choke, um, dual, dual line, easy to put, easy to solder on nice and small and it doesn't require me to wind my own transformer. My previous design which 
you can find on my blog. I wound my own transformer using thin 30 gauge wire, I want to say, and little tiny toroid beads that you stick on power transistors to snub off the little spikes. And those would take quite a lot of time. This one, easy to put on, very quick. And it seems to work just as good, if not better. So, again, I want to, maybe I want to let the board cool down a little bit. I don't want my solder to start flowing before I heat it. I assembled about 50 of these already, and I did them in a big batch, so I would do the transistor and the resistor first, do them all, and then I did it all the transformers next, and then I would go on to the surface, or the through-hole components, so it was a little bit easier and it allowed everything to cool down. That's pretty cool. So, repeating what I did before, just using the syringe, the thermal paste, or the, not thermal paste, Jesus solder paste. I got this chip quick. I bought it maybe two years ago from DigiKey. It has an expiration date, I believe. You're supposed to refrigerate it maybe or something like that, but yeah, there's a manufacturing date. 2015-3. Um, I think you're supposed to refrigerate it or else it possibly goes bad. I have not refrigerated it. It just sits out. I make sure I take the tip off and it comes with a little plastic cap that I cap and then clean this out. And for my uses it still seems to work. Um, it sits in my apartment most of the time which should be about room temperature anyways, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright, here we go. Just a little bit. The less I put on now, the less I have to clean up later if it looks bad. That might be a little too much. What happens is it, it kind of bubbles out on the sides of the transformer. It's not necessary not to do that. I guess I may be a little picky about how they look. Alright, now place the transformer. Then I'll heat up the gun again. This should be the last time I have to use that. You may notice that there's these little pads here. Um, that was just a test. I have these little tiny transformers I bought that fit right here. I was hoping that they would work because this one is about 40 cents a piece. The little ones I was buying was about 16 cents. So I was hoping that those would work and they would be cheaper to use. But, unfortunately, I assembled one, and they are not. Here's one I assembled. You can look at. So, it's a little grain of sand. Um, even if it did work, I probably wouldn't go with it because it was very difficult to place on there. I got the connections were bridged when I first started, so I had to wick away a lot of the solder and inspect it. And it was just more work than it's worth, so this one this transformer will be in a little bit more expensive in quantities of one um, seems to do the job all right this takes a little bit more heat so I'm gonna do the same thing I did before I'm gonna heat it up once it's heated up I'm gonna use my tweezers to press down on it a little just to get it nice and seated and into position I'm not gonna hold it down seems to not be necessary. It's not crucial how much heat I put on it. I haven't damaged one of these. Alright, so all the solder has turned nice and silver. Just gonna tap it. Move my gun away. I have to let it sit a second. I don't want it to, I want the solder to solidify before I move the board and it falls off and I have to do this all over again. I'm done with the soldering station. So as you can see that's on there nicely. Alright, let's uh, let's come out a little bit. Let this soldering station cool it down and then I can continue on with less noise. There we 
to drink a tea. It's important. I'll have to rewind through this. This gun takes forever to cool down. 65C. Almost there. 60C. I think it has to reach 50. 55. 50C. There we go. Finally. Get that. Whoa, get that out of the way. Almost lost it. Okay. Let's zoom in again a little bit. Now, I'm going to place the power switch. This little right angled through hole switch. You can get these as surface mount but unfortunately what they do is they take these pins instead of going through the board they they stick them out back here so it makes this this back footprint a little bit bigger than I could handle with this narrow board um, would have been nice to have another one I probably couldn't solder it with the heat gun because I have tried it before I was actually reworking one of these parts with a switch installed and I melted this little plastic piece so I would have to hand solder it anyways or turn down my heat gun so all I do is stick it in the board turn it over and luckily my solder gun is already heated up I'm going to solder one pin first to make sure that I get it seated nicely Clean the tip off. Got my nice Heiko. Lead, leaded solder with rosin core. Alright, we got one pin. Turn it over. I'm going to heat up the pin and push it in at the same time just to get it seated. Okay, uh, it's crooked. Let's try to get that straight. It doesn't affect the performance, it just, I think it looks better. There we go. It's on there straight now. Alright, then I solder the rest of the pins. And it takes no time at all. It's very soothing to do this. Just don't breathe in the fumes because they're pretty nasty probably cause cancer in, in uh, California, but luckily I'm in New York, so I don't think they cause cancer here. There we go. Alright, I'm going to clean, I'll clean that up afterwards when it's all assembled. I'll throw it in some alcohol. So probably the best part, the best thing to do next is actually test it before I go any further, and this will help me with the orientation of the LED. So this is my battery clips, got a little battery. It just sits in there nicely. I will solder it in later, but just for testing, I won't solder it right now. Here's my warm white LED. I'm going to make sure I know the orientation. It's already on, the switch comes turned on, which is pretty cool, not gonna lie. So I'm just gonna touch it to those two pads it lights up. I know this is my orientation I want. Then I have these pliers. There's these little, they're like square parts of the terminal. It's, it's hard to tell. It's hard to describe. I think that's where you would have it in the board. It would catch. So they kind of protrude out from the leads. I'm just going to grab right above them and start a 90 degree bend, like that. 
place it in the board while the battery's still in there so I know that it actually goes in and it's in the right orientation. My silk screen I messed up on, but unless I point that out, I don't think anyone will know. All right, we know it's in the right orientation. It's bent at a nice 90 degree angle. I'm gonna solder it in now. Starting with the back. With this light, I probably could have got away with trimming the lead short and not making it a through hole. Um, I think the next design, if I make these again, I'll probably do that so that you don't have these sticking through on this board. Um, I was worried that having them laying on the board kind of surface mount, making these surface mount would weak, make them weak. And since this hangs off the board, it might get bumped. They might break off, but I don't know. Let's see. And then I put some solder over here just to hold everything nice at an angle. Solder over here again. I don't want to keep my iron on it too long to keep it hot. So that's a that's a good angle. Alright, come in with the side cutters. Trim it flush. That's almost done. Okay, again, we'll put the put the battery in the clips. Just stick it in the board to make sure that it still works. Perfect. We didn't destroy the LED. Now comes the the last part, probably the hardest. You got a lot of thermal mass to heat up. Battery clips. Just set them down nice and level. I'm gonna heat one. I'm gonna solder one pin on the top, one on the bottom. Check to make sure they're aligned how I want them to. And then we'll finish it off by soldering them both. The other pin. Solder this pin. It's not. Kind of want a better. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna check to make sure that they're aligned nicely. There we go. They're nice and flush with the board. So I don't have to tweak them. Okay, I'm gonna do the same over here. I'm gonna finish soldering these. Quite a big hole, so it takes a lot of this thin solder to fill. All right. Let's zoom out. That's those all soldered up. They're still hot. Oh, warm. I have isopropyl alcohol, 91%. Just to clean this flux residue off. Let's see, it gets all over wherever I use the rosin core. Just throw it in the alcohol, let it sit, and then I'll brush it off. And then, usually it takes a couple minutes to let it sit. So, I'll show you one that's already been done. the magic of video, boom, done. So, it's got an on off switch. Ooh, let's put it right side up for you. On, off, on, off, beautiful. Little LED candle. Thank you for watching.